Hello students, myself Rakhi Kumari, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad, affiliated to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. Today in the lecture series of Microwave and Radar Engineering, I am going to start with the radar range equation and after that, after that we a uh, brief introduction of the probability of detection and false alarm. So, the what is meant by the our radar range equation and what is the significance of the radar range equation. Already in the previous lectures we have discussed that with the help of a radar we used to transmit the signal and after the, uh, and the signal interacts with the target it uh, reflects some signal and that reflected signal or that eco signal is detected by the radar and it is used to determine the location of the our target. So, location can be defined only when we have a range, we have a knowledge of a range. So, here is the, that is why we are going to have the radar range equation. So, radar range equation basically relates the range of a radar to the characteristic of the transmitter, receiver, antenna, target and the environment. And the application of radar range equation are for determining the maximum range at which the particular radar can detect a target. So, the basically radar range equation is uh, used to determine the range for which the particular radar can detect a signal. Serve as a means for understanding the factors affecting radar performance and it also used to determine the factors affecting the radar performance and it is a uh, important tool to aid in a radar system design. Then comes the derivation of the radar range equation. It we, have, we will go step by step so as to better understanding of yours. If the transmitter power PT is radiated by an isotropic antenna. So, here what we have assumed that it is a isotropic antenna which we are using as a transmitter section. So, why we are using the isotropic antenna? Can everyone should be aware that isotropic antenna is that type of antenna which radiates signals in all directions. So, basically we use the isotropic antenna in the case of a radar so as to the signal can be sent into the all direction. If we uh, use the any other type of antenna then that will be direction specific and we um, are able to miss any, uh, any target which lies in that direction with, with uh, and which is opposite or even some other direction as respect to our antenna. So, in basically we can say that in here we used to have the only isotropic antenna. So, if the power dense power in transmitter power P t is radiated by the isotropic antenna, the power density at a distance r from the radar is equal to the radiated power. So, if the our isotropic antenna is radiating a power P t and power density we have to calculate power density at a distance r from the antenna. Since we are assuming that this is a, our radar and we are able to find the power density here somewhere at a distance r. So, the power density which we calculate at a distance r from the our isotropic antenna is basically equal to the radiated power divided by the surface area. This is our radiated power from the isotropic antenna and when we divide it with 4 pi r square then that will give the power density at a range r from the isotropic. So, this is the first formula we are going to have. The uh, power density is measured in the unit of watt per square meter because you can say that unit of power is the watt and r square. 4 pi does not have any unit. So, we can say this is watt per meter square. Now, radar uses directive antenna with narrow beam width to concentrate the radiated power in a particular direction as I have told you. If you are using any directive antenna, in that case of course, active antenna has a narrow beam width the, to concentrate the 
radiated power PT in a particular direction, but this is not a basically normal application of a radar. So, if we generalize the because here we are talking about the generalized form of a radar that is why the statement isotropic antenna is must. Now comes the gain, gain of an antenna is a measure of the increased power density radiated in the same direction as compared to the power density that would appear in that direction from an isotropic antenna. So, since we know uh, uh, antenna is a passive component. So, since antenna is a passive component, so it gain has is described in the term of some of the standard values. Any, so, that one is the isotropic one here. So, basically gain of an antenna is a measure of increased power density radiated in a some direction for example, in this direction as compared to the power density that would appear in this direction when we are using the isotropic antenna. So, basically it is a ratio between the power density in particular direction by a antenna whose gain has to be measured with respect to power density in that particular direction with respect to the isotropic antenna whose gain in that particular direction is already known to you. As we always use this type of condition in case of a passive components gain measurement and same is applicable for the antenna gain measurement. So, with respect to that we have this formula the maximum gain g of an antenna can be defined as maximum power density radiated by a directive antenna which are specified to radiate in a particular direction only with respect to power density radiated by a lossless isotropic antenna with the same power input. Now, this here comes the statement of our gain. The power density at the target from a directive antenna with a transmitting gain g is then. So, now we are till now we are we have taken we have calculated the power density at the transmitting section. Now, antenna has a gain of g and now in this statement we are going to calculate the power density at a range r at a range r what we are going to find at a range r our target is there. Power density at a range r from the directive antenna is basically our power density at the transmitting end at the transmitting section of the antenna multiplied with the gain of antenna. You are able to see p t upon 4 pi r square into g. Now, the radar cross section, so here we are comes with the power density at a range r from the directive antenna which is exactly a place of our target. The radar cross section of the target determines the power density returned to the radar for a, part, for a particular power density incident on the target. It is denoted by sigma and is called the short target cross section or we can say radar cross section. So, what we are able to say? Ki radar cross section of the target, radar cross section of the target determines the power density which has to be returned back to the radar and it is denoted by sigma and it is also called as the tar, uh, target cross section or the radar cross section. So, the radar cross section is defined as the re radiated power density back to the radar and it is given by what we have power density at a range from the directive antenna that is p t g by 4 pi square into sigma which is our comes here and again 4 pi r square. This is the cross section at the target which uh, that will return back to the radar. Now, radar antenna capture a portion of the eco signal energy incident on it. The power received by the radar is given as a product of the incident power density times the effective area A of the receiving antenna. Now, 
already we are aware that there exists two type of uh, area in the case of a antenna. First one is the physical area and that one, uh, second one is the effective area. Of course, always the physical area and the effective area in the working condition of a antenna always differ. Effective area basically defines ki how much area is effectively doing its work basically. Matlab, for example, if it is a receiving section of the antenna, then how much antenna, how much part of the antenna, this is a physical antenna and how much part is basically accepting the signal that is called the uh, receiving. If we consider that our, my palm is a complete antenna, so this is the physical area of the antenna. But if we are saying that only this much part is this actively receiving the signal, so this is called the effective area. So, now comes the ki whatever component, whatever signal is received by the receiving antenna depends upon the product of the incident power density multiplied with the area of the receiving signal. So, what is the power density now? Power density has been changed and it is now equal to our PTG upon 4 pi r square into sigma upon 4 pi r square. And for your convenience, I am again repeating what is all this. Now, PT, if you are able to remember, PT is the power density of the transmitting antenna when the actual radar is transmitting signal. And G is the gain of the antenna, PT upon 4 pi r square is the basically the power density. And R is the range of the radar and the target. G is the gain of the transmitting antenna. Now, sigma is the cross section at the target which is actually receiving the signal which is transmitted by the transmitting antenna upon 4 pi r square. So, this is the power density which is actually now received by the receiving antenna. And how much power density is received is basically depends upon the effective area of the receiving antenna. That is why it is multiplied with A e which is over the effective area of the receiving antenna. So, the, now the equation changes into P T G A e sigma 4 pi square and this is uh, basically R to the power 4 r square and r square. The now the maximum range of the radar that is given by the r max is the distance beyond which the target cannot be detected. So, so we can see that this r max plays a very significant role because if we provide any signal or we want to have the detect the signal beyond this limit then our radar, radar will of course give a false signal or we can say it will not detect anything and the whatever signal is received will be the considered as a false which we are going to discuss in the further slides. So, before using the radar it is very important for us to determine the value of R max so that we can easily get an idea up to how much range it will detect the signal or we can say that up to how much range it will detect the target. It occurs when the received signal power P r just equal to the minimum detectable signal as mean and in that case we are able to get this one, we are basically P r is equal to as mean and this is the minimum detectable signal. So, by cross changing it what we are able want to have? r to the power 4 should be equal to p t g a e sigma 4 pi to the power 2 and uh, now we are p r here and this p r has to be replaced with the minimum detectable signal and this is the s mean. So, now we have to for finding out the value of r, we have to take the fourth root of this one complete expression that is why this is then here r max is equal to p t g a e sigma exactly the same thing and the fourth root of that. So, in that way we are able to get the exact expression of the radar range equation. 
and now what does this states? It states that if long range are desired, the transmitter power should be large. So, uh, this expert conclusion can be get from this whatever if we want the maximum range in that case the values which are at the numerator side has to be increased. So, we can directly conclude from this expression only which values has to be increased that means for example, if we want to have the maximum range in that case P t which is our transmitter transmitting power has to be increased. The antenna which we are using its gain should be high. The antenna which we are using at the receiver section its effective area should be high because this parameters are under our control, but the sigma the target which is not our end control. So, if we want to increase the value of the R max this three parameter has to be increased and parallelly what we have can do we can have the state if the long range are desired transmitted power should be large the radiated energy should be considered a narrow beam large anti transmitting gain already told that G should be large the echo energy received by the large antenna aperture that means A should be large large antenna aperture means A should be large and the receiver should be sensitive to the weak signal that means sensitive to the weak signal what does it mean it has to be minimum. So, this are the basically our radar range equation. Now, comes the probability of detection and the false alarm. So, what is meant by the probability of detection and the false alarm? Basically, whenever we give the signal, what is the base? Uh, if you are able to recall the block diagram of a radar, we are able to have the this in our receiver section. Just for the recalling you, because basically this will decide whether the signal is received or what is the probability of detection in the false alarm. So, we are having the from the what we are having in the receiver section, we have an antenna and this gives the signal to the low noise RF amplifier you are if you are remembering low noise RF amplifier and after this signal goes to the mixer and some somewhere we can say that directly it will go to the mixer, but of course already told to you this will reduce the sensitivity of a radar that is why it has to be included in your block diagram. So, uh, this low noise RF amplifier will give the signal to the mixer it will act as a incoming signal to the mixer and then a local oscillator this will give the our IF signal and this IF signal goes to the IF amplifier then to the second detector or we can see demodulator. So, what is the function of the demodulator? Demodulator basically function same as we used to done in the communication system. It basically distinguish the uh, we can say it separate the in uh, our modulating signal and the our carrier. So, in this section we can say it separate the transmitting signal and the carrier signal and after that it gives the signal to the video amplifier. Video amplifier will amplify the signal to that much level so that it can be displayed on the screen. Now, comes the threshold. What is the function of a threshold? Threshold basically set a value V t for example. If the signal which is coming out of here is above this value then we can say that our target exists and if the incoming signal value is below this V t then we can say that no target and only noise is present. So, what is this basically this is our false alarm. 
if a target is detected then it is called the detection and when no target is detected only noise detected is basically our false alarm. So, in our radar system it is very important to detect the probability of detection that is detection of the target and false alarm and both plays a very important role. And these are basically the complete description of the same thing which I have discussed with you. So, I am going to leave this slide. Now, comes the probability of the false alarm. The noise receiver noise at the input of the amp IF amplifier is desired by the Gaussian probability density function with a means value of 0 which is represented by this one. These are basically the expression which you have to basically go through and it is uh, not much more asked in the examination also. The basic definition of the what is meant by the detection of a target and what is meant by the probability and you have to go through the final expression. Where P V D V is the probability of finding the noise voltage V between the values of V and V D V and psi naught is the mean square value of the noise voltage. And when the Gaussian noise is passed through the I F filter now, the probability density is a function of envelope R is given by the Rayleigh PDF and it is represented by this expression. And if we can say that probability that the envelope of the noise voltage normally we are what we are saying that this noise voltage is below the value of Vt. So, what is the probability the envelope of the noise voltage which ex exceed the threshold Vt is given by this expression. So, if there is a probability that it will exceed to so this is the probability ki how much there is a chances that a noise voltage or we can say noise will exceeds the Vt. This is the probability of the false alarm. So, so the value by which the probability that the envelope of the noise voltage will exceed the voltage threshold voltage Vt is basically the probability of the false alarm and it is given by this expression and since it represents the probability that the noise will cross the threshold and is called the target when only noise is present. Thus, the probability of false alarm which is noted by PFA is given by this expression. The probability of a false alarm does not indicate whether or not radar will trouble by excessive false indication of target. The time between false alarm is better measure of the effect of noise on the radar performance. So, so we can say that probability of false alarm is, is not a major concern, but the major concern is the our time between the false alarm. So, the average time between crossing of the decision threshold when noise alone is present is called the false alarm time and is given by this one. So, we can see that false alarm time is the important factor, where T k is the time between crossing of the threshold Vt by the noise envelope, the false alarm probability can be expressed in terms of false alarm term by noting that the false alarm prob probability PFA is the ratio of the time the envelope is actually above the threshold to the total time it could have been above the threshold. The PFA is the ratio of the time the average envelope is actually above the threshold or to the total time it could have been above the threshold. And average duration of the uh, threshold crossing by noise T k average is approximately the reciprocal of the I f bandwidth B and it is uh, given by the average of T k is the false alarm time T f a and it is expressed in this term. So, we can say that the uh, prob probability of false alarm is basically dependent upon the our threshold value psi naught and bandwidth B. Now, comes the probability of detection. So, probability of detection means that how much time there is a probability that the detected when the signal in the coming from the envelope is above the threshold and it is actually a target. 
it is not a noise and it is given by this expression the probability density function of the envelope r at the video output is given by this expression where i naught is the modified Bessel function of the zero order and argument z for large value z asymptotic a uh, uh, asymptotic expression for i naught z is given by this when the signal is present a should be equal to 0 where we have a and that is equal to 0 when the signal is present and in that case our probability density get reduced to this expression because here we are assuming that a is 0 and equation 1 in that case is called as the rise probability density function it is named after a scientist who first formulated it the probability of detecting the signal is the probability that the envelope r will exceed the threshold vt and thus the probability of detection is given by this expression when the probability density function psr of equation 1 is substituted in the above equation the probability of detection pd can be evaluated by simple means the expression of pd along with equation 1 because equation 1 will give the value of psr is a function of a signal amplified a threshold vt and the mean noise power psi naught in the radar system analysis it is more convenient to use signal to noise power than a square to psi naught so here comes the a upon psi naught half and this is signal amplitude to so the rms noise voltage and at last it can be expressed in the terms of signal to noise ratio so the probability detection pd can then be explained in terms of signal no to noise and the ratio of the threshold to noise ratio and it is given by this one so this is the expression of our basically relation empirical formula which gives the relationship between the these two and is the signal to noise expression where the value of a is this one where this is the probability of the false alarm detection and b is equal to this and this is the probability of detection so in the we can say that you should remember this formula because the complete expression and the derivation is not a part because here you have been asked with the general introduction what is meant by the false alarm what is meant by the probability of detection and what is meant by the probability of false alarm and on in, on what factor it depends so here we comes to the end of the today's lecture which comprises of the radar range equation probability of detection and the probability of false alarm we will continue with the more concept basic concept of the radar in the next lecture thank you